when does golf season start? Like, when does things start yeah, opening up? Because I have more relevant golf questions because she is very Yeah. Um, I think that that would be a good thing. I think he'd actually like to learn personally, but yeah. it's really fun. I'm supposed to be Tim's dumb dog. Yeah, we're gonna... That could be a video. You know, we're going to do a series of. Wait, can I enjoy? Can like I join in? Where do you golf? Uh, literally, the golf course is my home course. Okay, I like Meadowood personally, but because it's prettier and I like the range there a lot more, and I'm not scared of. Oh, fuck, sorry. Are there things that I can't say? Oh yeah, that is really dry. I went a little too gung ho on that one. Hell. So I just have a throne of dogs right now. Do at the moment. So maybe these aren't crappy. Maybe we just did a poor job putting them together. We have a very special guest today. Very special. Oh, please, God help me. This is probably the worst idea we've ever had. <laughs> oh. A very special guest loaded down with dogs over there. Mm -hmm. I have <sighs> my white dog is a very shy dog, so the fact she's clinging to you is, I don't know, says something about you. Dogs this'll, like me. This will be interesting to see if anyone's <laughs> actually interested in this. <laughs> hey, oh, people are gonna watch. It's not. It, it's not meant to be offensive, Lena. By the way, we should probably <laughs> introduce my youngest child, Lena Jones, who's celebrating her birthday. And all she wanted for her birthday was to be on my podcast. That's such a lie. <laughs> and a really expensive pair of cowboy boots. Oh, they're so beautiful. Yeah, you should have worn them. Uh, they are pretty. They're should have brought them out. Yeah, yeah should have brought them out. I don't. Maybe at the end we can get a little cameo. Yeah, I like. Run in. I like cowboy boots. I like that whole western vibe thing. No, they're beautiful. Just the most expensive ones in the store. Okay, <laughs> that's because they're the tallest in the store. Yeah, mm. that's not true. There were a couple that were that tall, but they weren't that expensive. I'm sorry. I technically I sent you a picture. Are you really? I sent you a picture <laughs> and I said I like this style of boots. Yeah, not were, these exact ones. There were and no then other ones goes, that looked like that. Here it is, not wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> None of my presents were wrapped. <laughs> he goes, "Do they need to be?" I'm like it's fine. Yeah, I think that's a difference in. Uh... I said, "Do you want it wrapped?" You said, "I don't care." I yeah. would have wrapped it. You did not specify. To be fair, you do wrap everything for Christmas. My thing yeah. at Christmas is I do the shittiest job wrapping, so that's how they know it's a gift for me. Right. I just crinkle it up, crinkle it around. Sometimes I use duct tape. It's a distinct. Duct tape? It's a very distinct look. Yeah? Yeah. Like it. It's it's the opposite of like pretty. Yeah, some but. people like the presentation and some people like, why would you take away from the actual gift itself? <laughs> I take Like make it look like absolute rubbish. Yeah. No. And then... Check that out. Woo! You need Poppin'. to take pride in wrapping, especially if it's going to sit under the tree for a month. That's true. Yeah. We'll do a decent I can job. appreciate that yeah, perspective. And then some things he just wraps at the very last second and doesn't realize. And then there was one gift that was just like laying out there and was like, oh, I forgot to wrap that. Here you go. No, every once in a while. You know I'm busy. I get preoccupied. Plus my brain gets scattered at times. Oh, yeah. So, Lena, how did you end up on this podcast? Um... A year of asking. It took her a year to get okay, her on the pod, Okay, all I'm going to say Dude, is that... we haven't that... even been doing this a year. <laughs> we literally Tim, haven't even been doing this a year. Tim said that this was a good idea, and I said, yeah, I'd love to. I want to. you to remember that you said this was a good idea. And I said, I'd love to, <sighs> and then Mr. Jones over here said that he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> it's like, I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> This, this I said, podcast is about archery, and you don't even shoot a bow. Me. People want to know what it's like growing up with MFJJ. <laughs> yeah, they do. Do you call him dad, or do you call him MFJJ? Um, it kind of depends. Or what is the Sometimes split? it's dad. <laughs> All of my friends call him MFJJ. <laughs> they do. When I <laughs> am referring to him to anyone, I'm like MFJJ, just because everyone knows who that is. Yeah. And it's really fun when I'm at school and kids are like... <laughs> Oh my God, MFJJ is your dad. Can I get free things? I'm like, no. Yes. God. Yes, you can. He gives away many free things. No. Many free things. That's the kids at your school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No, and then I'll see kids wearing like hats with your faces on it. And I'm like, oh, you've seen that? Yeah. You've, made it, you've infiltrated the high school? Yeah. Dang. 
First time was last year at Powder Puff. I was like, oh, that's my father, <laughs> and I'm going to walk hat? away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh, what do you think about that, Josh? Is that weird? What, that... Uh, High school kids oh. are wearing you? No, I don't think it's weird. I mean, Louis? that just... <laughs> I'm scared. Well, hi, Louie. Good Lord. Sit. Um, He's going to just squirrel oh, like into your lap. Stand. Watch your mic stand. Yeah, he'll be yeah. all right. Um, he's, he's very... I, don't, I don't think it's weird. I think it's. I think it's kind of neat and exciting to a given degree that you know it's hard to it's hard to reach kids in this sport like yeah. it's really hard i'm glad you said i'm glad you said reach instead of touch <laughs> I know, right? no, reach. <laughs> for sure if i was like don't use that word god that'd be bad yeah yeah be a, before you know it i'm a what a 80s 90s pop star yeah. oh. <laughs> dude oh it. man um apparently <laughs> okay, we're uh, tim's dogs have a real affection for uh the female Variety. Yeah, they just no, like I her. think dogs just like me. Yeah. yeah, we'll see if like Chloe doesn't end up being a brat about it though. No, she's probably gonna freak out. Yeah, yeah at some that's point. my person. <laughs> yeah, so Chloe is actually Lena's dog. Just for clarification, mm. Lena lives with me half the time and with her mom half the time, and the dog goes where Lena goes. So sometimes Chloe's here and sometimes she's not, because sometimes Lena's here and sometimes she's not. I'm here a lot of the time. You're here half the time right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then I make appearances here and there. You does, she does just randomly show up, which at some point you might want to give me a heads up, you know. Like when Nana's oh. not living in the house, you might want to give me a heads up if you're not like oh. if you're not here all the Dad, time. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. That's it's weird. For, it's for your benefit. I know, but you, I don't want to think about that. See. Yeah, but, and I don't want to think about like if it. Nobody's either. living in this house and I'm taking a shower downstairs. Do you think I'm really getting dressed no. before I walk upstairs? Probably not. <laughs> no. That's gross. <laughs> no. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Yeah, very fair. Hey, you're 18. You're an adult. You can think about it now. No, once I was born, I was convinced that neither of my parents had any romantic anything ever, ever again. They don't do anything because I don't like to think about it. It's well, gross. No, we don't. Well, not you two, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but like just in general, I don't like thinking about that. Well, nobody you likes thinking about that. You didn't have any physical that. aspect to life ever, nobody, ever again once I was born. Lana, nobody likes thinking about that. Mm-hmm. I didn't like thinking about my parents in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's grandma. That's Nana. That's yeah. Nana. <laughs> what about Nana getting down? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. weird. <laughs> it is a weird thought, but this Ugh. reality of it, you know, that's human beings. <laughs> that's I, no I don't want to think about it. I, I really don't want you to think about it either. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Anyways, different subject, please. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right, so eighteen years young. What, what, like, what, what's what's exciting you, about turning eighteen you're, for you're, you? You're gonna earn your money. Today, you, I did, you, did you like? <laughs> did you like go to the gas station and get a pack of cigarettes and smoke one? Or um, oh, well, Jesus. that's not a thing anymore. Uh, <laughs> I could buy a lotto ticket. Yeah, but Ooh. I think that's it. I think I can go gamble in Idaho. Have you exercised any of your eighteen-year-old? I don't turn eighteen for she's another two days. two days. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's but two days. I are you planning to when you turn eighteen? Um, I'm getting a tattoo on Thursday. For my great grandparents, and then, Dude, is that impressive. your first tattoo? No, eight. I have three. Eight. It's okay. Well, that'll be my third. Okay, it'll be your third. I have. Yeah, stars. we can talk about how long I had. To... Hey, Chloe! Oh, no, knock it off. Knock it off. Come here. That'll be good. Uh, we could talk about how long it took you to convince me to let you do that. Oh, that was so. Do you have a tattoo? No. Long. Okay. I, I still think not. he should get one, but Louis, lay down. Might head me down he the will. dark path. He'll lay down. Uh, what are you going to become emo? No, probably not. <laughs> Just a bunch of tattoos. I think that'd be fine. I'm sure you do. No, it took so, so very long to convince him. And it was like a year. And then a year later, I brought it up. And he goes, ah, fine. Because he asked. That's ev- not how it went. He asked everyone at the shop the first year. And they were all like, no. <laughs> yeah, would you let your kid do that? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Repetitively. Repetitively. And I want to try to remember what I said. Like I said, well, and this was after your mom and I got divorced, and mm-hmm. it said, well, you don't need both parents' consent. So if you really want to do it, I can't stop you. Mm-hmm. Chloe. Goodness. Hey, hey, hey. Chloe, knock it off. Come here. Louis, it's do just you want to lay down? Relax. Louis, I, think will- that's, I think it's the last one. Yeah, he'll lay down. So I want to there say, hey, go. come here. Come here. There, sit, sit. Um, I want to say I said that um, you know you don't need both your parents' 
permission to do that, so you don't have to have my permission to do it, but I don't approve of it. Yeah. And I'm not going to. So you can do what you want, but I, I'm not going to say it's okay. Yeah. I don't think it is because I don't think you're old enough to make that decision. And then a year later, I asked again <laughs> because I wasn't going to do it without his permission. And then she didn't do it for then, right? Because you were trying to do it then. And your mom was like, oh, let's go get tattoos because your mom's got like eight tattoos or, yeah. or whatever. So I could have got it the year prior, but I decided not to because I wanted his permission because I would have felt really bad if I didn't get that. Because hey, 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 it's at okay. the time I was okay. 16, it's so it was very young, but it was something that I had wanted for a long time and it had meant a lot to me. So That's such a big decision. Yeah, she it's, can't take it back. It's on yeah. your body forever. Well, you can, but it's a lot, a lot more work, I guess. And then it never turns more, out looking right. Anyway, a lot more pain. Too. Yeah, like a yeah. Lot of pain. It doesn't. It never really looks that good when they do get removed. So it's a, yeah, it's a really big decision. It's something I th- yeah, the thought fire, about when I was the fire went out. <laughs> of course. Oh, are you did. kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. It's something I thought about when I was young, and I had a couple ideas, and I, I never came around to anything. So nothing I thought about was ever like, oh, I, I think that'll be cool fifty years from now. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, and I try and choose ones that are very dainty and, like, show me for who I am and somewhat hidden. And if they aren't hidden, it's very minimal and small because I like to be able to hide them when necessary. So I have one behind my ear and one on my wrist. But the one behind – people didn't even know I had a tattoo until they were – like, my hair was up at volleyball. They were like, what is that? (laughs) I'm like, oh, I did a thing. <laughs> so you basically did it for, like, you weren't showing it off then, right? You did it because you wanted nah, it. No, she did it because she wanted it. Yeah. yeah. And I was, after a year of her, Chloe, you're going to knock the camera over. After a year of her uh, harping on it, I kind of figured that was really her decision and not coming from someone else's. So yeah. I decided to let it go, especially... Didn't you start playing volleyball again finally, and that's why I said it was all right? Um, I started playing club again last year. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where I finally went, you know, fine, I'll let you do it. Because I was only going to be a practice approve. player, and then I started to play in, like, actual tournaments. Yeah, we should probably digress from before that to how you got to that point. Oh. Like you, cause, so from you started playing volleyball when you were eight. Yeah, club. Club level at 12, right? Yeah, you were eight I was playing, eight playing, a, playing yeah, a U-12. Playing with U-12s, yeah. Yeah. And you were reasonably good at volleyball. Yeah. 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 I mean, I personally still think that I'm not terrible, but like... I don't think you're terrible at volleyball. But no, for your age, you know, you you could play against kids a couple years older than you relatively easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like you grow up in that environment. It's a very high intensity. I, that's I have a lot of competitiveness, not... Just from that, but also from MFJJ over here. Um, <laughs> I'm a little competitive. <laughs> Just a little. Yes. Oh, God. No comment. That's a genetic thing, dude. It's, no, it's we will play card games, and it's like me, Taylor, and Dad all have to be standing next to each other because we will be throwing elbows. Yeah. Like, it's bad. Did I ever let you win at anything? No. 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 And do you think and do you think that hurt you or helped you? I think it helped me, but I wanted to punch you in the face. Sure, you didn't like it at the time, but you probably tried a little harder and worked a little harder at those things, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Anyways, back that's to volleyball. Called, that's called parenting. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't let your kids win. You can let it, you can let it be competitive. And close, but don't ever let him win. No, and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to win. The first time that I actually ever beat him at something, I think I lost my shit. What'd you mean? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, we swear. Okay. It's, I'm your dad. We swear. I know. I figured, but I didn't know if that was like, you're not allowed to say that in like the first five minutes or whatever. Well, what did you beat him at? We don't pay any attention. Yeah, what did um, you beat I think it was Nerds. It was what? Nerds. It's a card game that our oh. family plays. Okay. It's very much how quick can you do like seven things at once. Yeah. And it's, it gives uh, me a headache. Oh, it's skill. It's, it's um, a lot of so skill. So it's like uh, it's like solitaire, okay. but there's like seven people playing solitaire at a time or five people playing solitaire at a time. Mm-hmm. And um, and everyone's uh, discard piles are mutually shared. Yeah. 
So it's you have a certain number of cards in your hand and a certain number of stuff in front of you, and then everything in the middle you can play off everybody else's. So who can pay attention to what's going on in multiple places at once does really well at it. But surprise, I'm kind of good at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, it's also genetic because both of my girls are pretty damn good at it too. Yeah. He also taught us to be really good at it. I think a lot of things are genetic. There's genetic help for sure. Like I'm so good at archery. <laughs> what the two times you've actually done it? <laughs> Currently, yeah. I... What was the what was the main reason I said no originally to this? Because I'm not. I don't do archery. You don't do archery. Why are so you on an there's... archery podcast? Because people want to know about you. They do. I I understand that, but it just that, that was why I said no. Yeah, and you know that. So. Um. Are we gonna Are we going back to volleyball or what am I hitting? Um, I think you should work through your progression of volleyball. Okay. Um, so started how we got to where a uh, responsible adult allowed a child to get tattooed. Okay. <laughs> let's so, give a good explanation behind this, please. Uh, <laughs> let's go through my life story. When I was eight, I started playing club volleyball with girls that were like three years older than me. They were 11, two, 12 most. Two to Take three and years. spin that mic towards you a little bit. There you go. Like this? Mm-hmm. Two to three years older than me, and you kind of just start to get in a groove. I was playing basketball and volleyball at the same time, and then after that season, my parents were like, dude, pick one, because they're at the same time. You can't. I'd have to pick one or the other. And so... Well, and and consequently, at that time, we also had another daughter who was also in club volleyball. Oh, yeah. As well. So it was chaos trying to get you to everything. Yeah. And we'd have volleyball four days a week, at least... And then on the weekends, we'd have tournaments. So it would be like Tuesday, Thursday, we have a two-hour practice. And then after that two-hour practice, we have a two-hour training. And then Monday, Wednesday, we have an hour with Rob, who does like all of our workout stuff, who is also the club director. Shout out to Rob White. (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Um, And then uh, second year, I played U12 again, which was really difficult because I wanted to be a setter. But... They were like, no, we need you hitting. I said, ugh, fine. And then uh, by the time that I should have been, I was think I was 11, turning 11 that year. So I should have been staying another U12 year. I was playing U13. And then I kind of just kept going up from there. Staying a year ahead. Yeah. Talking about the running around, getting them to practice and stuff. Are you old enough that you realize how much time it takes to like do that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. And... Because uh, it just a, hit me in the last like five years how much time your parents put into <laughs> running you around, and it's insane. Well, yeah. and I had the uh, the job that was a little more flexible, so I ended up doing a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, funny story. So my dad was always the one who would get up in the morning and make everyone coffee and have me have breakfast, and he was the one brushing my hair, and I would want to hit him because, oh, Pretty that well. was the worst experience ever. <laughs> Worst experience of my life, that man brushing my hair. He's like, Lena, we need to get this out now. I'm screaming and crying. <laughs> uh, screaming is not accurate. Yeah. It's, I it's specifically very remember accurate, screaming. Very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but Can, he was the one who would take me to school and pick me up from school. And all I remember from like kindergarten is going to school and I'm in the back and we're just listening to like Eminem or Rock 94 and a half. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> censor just, your music choices? Josh, no, what was that? you didn't censor your music choices. No, that's cool. <laughs> Why would I? I don't know. Some parents do. I don't, uh, know. I don't know. I just. I'm glad I didn't grow up listening to Baby Shark. No, like it's bad. Oh, it is bad. No, no. I just I listen to what I listen to and figured I've kind of always had this philosophy. And there's people that um, that watch this podcast that will disagree with me, but. I refuse to accept that on my day of judgment, I'm going to be sent to hell because I swore. Sorry, yeah. I just I just don't buy it. Oh yeah, I don't I don't I don't accept that it's a horrible thing to do, and it's how most normal human beings communicate. So I didn't shelter my kids from. It. I wouldn't let them do it, <laughs> but you know, I just I I was just going to be myself. Consequently, I have a mouth of a sailor. Well, thanks. So, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> so, like, I mean, strategy <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Well, it again, helps express. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. I like swearing. I actually like it a lot. Tim, I don't you think don't I've do ever heard you often swear. For how much yeah, you seem to like it. I refrain. <laughs> <laughs> tries to tries to reserve it for a really important moment. Fact, I do reserve I, it. Hold on, hold on, hold the hold the phone. When have you sworn? 
I've never heard you swear. I just said shit on our last video. That oh, I was, I was wow. Today. Say fuck for me. Fuck. Wow. <laughs> Enjoy hell. <laughs> fuck. I said it on our, no, I said the F word on every, one of our recent podcasts. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's so rare. I don't even notice it. Yeah. 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 It takes a while. It takes a really long time to open up, I think, to the to the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, yeah. just like let it's it easy fly. To, some people are better at it than others, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, that's it's taken me a long time. It's like one page at a time. I can just. Whoosh, well, the amount you know. of um, exposure I had to dealing with people over the years, especially at a young age, hit, let me hit that younger. Because I just, at a certain point, I'm like, I just don't care anymore. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter what yeah. I do. So, and I'm not going to please everybody and I'm mm-hmm. not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So yeah. I'm just going to be myself. And hopefully people like it, and those that don't like it can, you know, go elsewhere. That's I funny. don't care either in like personal communications, but there's something to me that's it's so so much bigger when it goes out to the internet that I still I still can catch myself being a little reserved every once in a my, while. My aunt, and it's definitely better yeah, not to be. My aunt still gives me a hard time about it. <laughs> it's about swearing, or yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, which one, yeah. Rana? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Swearing specifically. Oh, yeah. Ju- yeah. Justice's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Justice's, Justice's mom. Simeon's mom. Simeon's mom. Yeah. 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 There's oh. a, woo. Well, Sometimes Simeon, he's the mayor of uh, Buckville. What? Buckville, Bucktown, USA. <laughs> Bucktown, USA. Old Bucky. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, anyway, um, you're playing volleyball. Oh. You're up to. We're up to like 13, 14. Um, after so now, you that, what, what age was it you first started to really have struggles with dealing with like the stress where you like you'd be sitting there shaking, and then the whistle would go and you'd stop and you'd play and everything would be fine, but <laughs> then you'd stop and start shaking again. <laughs> so. Anxiety. I've always had anxiety. That sure. was one thing that I've always had. But it didn't always physically manifest itself. No, right? especially not with volleyball. That was one thing that was like never impacted by it. But uh, I think I got to U13. I think it was 13s where you started yeah, showing it, it outwardly. Would get to the point where we'd be playing and I my hands would be physically shaking. I'd be like, I couldn't, my throat was so dry. And I'd be mm. like, take me off the court right now. And, but then the whistle would blow and I'd play and I'd play fine. And then play stops. I go back to having a panic attack. So it would just get to a point where it was so stressful and I didn't know how to handle it. And all that countered with all the adrenaline that you get from playing a game. It was so much that I was just like, ah, help me. Get me out of here. I want to run away. My fight or flight kicked in and obviously I like to run. So not actually, I hate running, but I like to run away from my problems, but I've learned to deal with that. Anyways, 15, or no, 14s. Mm-hmm. Um, I started to fix it a little bit. I think you started to fix it that year, actually. Like it was get it, it was resolving itself, but not well, but they yeah. also took you out of What was helping? I honestly don't even know. Mm. I I don't know. I started seeing a therapist. <laughs> you did? And so it was but nice But did they give you like, any good like tools or stuff that helped you or or was it more just understanding things? I think I didn't understand what was going through my body and now even if I have a panic attack, personally my favorite tool is let the panic attack happen mm-hmm. because I'd rather deal with it for 5 minutes than have to deal with it for an hour. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's personally my best tool. That's everyone else is different. So you can't really be like, oh, well, this works for her. This is going to work for me. But Mm -hmm. I think knowing what was going on in my body definitely helped a lot more. And my parents were like, you need to work through this. You're not just going to sit here and like sit out because you can't run away from your problems. Well, we should probably be authentically honest about the anxiety and whatnot. You had anxiety... Your whole life, and oh, you, yeah. you fought me almost every day to go to school. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Kindergarten, I would call him crying mm. for take me home. She would, uh, she'd get called out sick a lot. Yeah, and until I finally, like, I was getting called from work like every third day, and have you need to come get your kid? She's sick, and then I'd bring her home, and she'd be fine. I'm mm-hmm. like, you don't have a fever, you're not throwing up. What's going on? And eventually, I cannot remember. Do you remember the lady in the office who? Um, I finally talked to that was like, okay, I just won't let her leave unless she's got a fever or thrown up. For the life of me, I don't I can't, remember I can't her remember, name. And I, I really mm. wish I could because my, I was I was losing it. I was like, I can't keep leaving work just because you don't feel comfortable because mm-hmm. you think you're sick. And she finally made you just stay. And like, if you need to sit in the in the 
in the health room until you feel like you can go back to class, fine, but you're not leaving. Yeah. Um, cause that was, that was a, a breakdown, but every, every second day or every third day trying to take you to school was like a freak Hell. out, <laughs> crying, bawling your eyes out. I can't go. I can't go. I can't go. And what did I do? You made me go. Every time. Yep. No matter what. It wasn't an option. Yeah. It was like, you need to get your education. Also, well, uh, legally, you need to be here and you need to work through your problems. Well, it wasn't just that. It was, you, I wasn't going to let you run from your problems, mm -hmm. no matter how difficult it was. There were days that I, after dropping you off, like I'd always be strong with you. Yeah. I'd lose it as soon as I dropped you off with you freaking out at me. I felt like a terrible father. I, I, I'd, I'd frequently cry to work on my way to work because I just felt horrible. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was one of the most challenging things I ever did and it didn't really stop. I mean, it got better as you got a little older in, in elementary, but, and then you went to a different school and the Scared whole the first of <laughs> year of going to a different school, well, I got to know the people at school real well and it was the same thing. It was the same thing, but worse because now you're getting bigger and stronger and more defiant with it. Mm -hmm. um, but, so uh, but yeah, it was always a battle. When, but I never saw it manifest itself in your sports mm -hmm. until it started manifesting itself in your sports. But yeah, yeah, and then you get to fourteens, and, and I'm dealing with it a lot better. One of my biggest fears is vomit. By the way, I don't like being nauseous. I don't like being sick. Even if people are around me, I can't be around it. Yeah, and so that's I would get anxious, and then I'd get nauseous, and then I'd get more anxious, and it was just a terrible cycle. And everyone around me is like, Lena, you're not going to puke. And it was kind of self-perpetuating, right? Yeah. you're like, the more yeah. anxious you got, the more nauseous you got, the more you thought you were going to vomit, the worse it got. Yep. Yeah, she totally did it all to herself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was just a huge downward spiral. I'm mm -hmm. my own worst enemy, obviously. But it got better, I'd say. I learned how to calm myself down a little bit mm -hmm. and uh i just <laughs> chloe is going to get burned oh she'll be fine now she'll be good ironically they know better it's, i think they can feel the heat through the device without actually touching it probably yeah. did you ever try the cold water trick have you heard of that no when a panic attack happens you submerge your head in cold water I didn't do that, but I'd always put my wrists under cold water because I'd also get really hot, and mm. that would freak me out as well. So, like, it could be snowing outside, and I would be standing out there in mm. a T-shirt and, and she spandex. Always, she always tried to cool off no matter what. Yeah, because my and understanding I'd be like, is I'm sweating. that cold water thing does, like, uh, it hits your adrenals or something, or it shocks you, and then immediately it flips the state of brain that uh, you were in. I don't know if it's an effective tool or not, but something i heard through the internet yeah. it kind of just takes your maybe mind off, off tiktok of whatever maybe <laughs> uh, <laughs> love TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um but 14s kind of got a grasp on it i was sick and we played in a tournament and i played the whole time and like didn't have any issues oh i got a burp um but just do <sighs> anyways so then uh, U 15s year comes around and this is 2019 going into 2020. So it's COVID and I'm doing really well. I'm practicing with my team and other teams. And like, yep. I started working with a personal trainer, not only for volleyball, but for the, like getting stronger and everything. General fitness. Yeah. yeah. My life was still solid. Yeah. Still probably a year to two years ahead of most kids in, in vol in that sport. Yeah. Even with your, struggles and whatnot mm -hmm. that you had your ability and skill was still quite a bit ahead of most have you done beach volleyball yeah i hate it really heat oh yeah beach volleyball is fun like it. it's athletic it is. yeah it is. she just it's very like, athletic it's fun like when it's hot. raining yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like it's overcast <laughs> yeah and i also didn't like the way i liked the way that it made my legs stronger and i'd get back on uh, like indoors and beach? i'd be like wow i yeah. can jump now <laughs> but, yeah beach is incredible for your legs yeah, yeah. you yeah. have to switch the way you set the way you hit the way you mm. pass and the way you serve it's different yeah and so you'd have to go from one to the other and i didn't like switching that up so i would rather go and like train with a personal trainer the whole summer than be out in the sand but that's just a personal opinion a lot i know a lot of girls like to do it and i did it for a really long time yeah. like almost every summer but mm -hmm. it got to a point where i was like i don't like being out in the sun i think what the last time that i played beach i got like sun poisoning because i was dehydrated and sunstroke 
Yeah, it was not good. Yeah, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but COVID hit, and so I we all just had to sit around and do nothing, and I felt fine because I was always one for not liking to leave the house. I mean, for the first time in your life, you didn't have to go anywhere or do anything when (laughs) you were always being forced to go somewhere. Yeah, yes. Yeah, my problems finally caught up to me. (laughs) And yeah, and then I was no longer allowed to make you. Go do anything. Yeah. And how long did it take you to get out of that? Long time. We'll get there. <laughs> so we get back to playing volleyball that summer. And it's kind of just like, it's really weird. We're only allowed to have like half an hour practices or like an hour. And there's only, you can only have three girls on each side of the court and you have to be wearing a mask the whole time. And so I have a choice to either play with girls my age or play up <laughs> And it was kind of difficult to choose between the two only because I had been playing with these girls my entire life and they were my friends and I wouldn't know anyone on this other team. And, but the coach was it's super difficult. That, different, yeah. I had that and make that decision. I remember back in high school. Yeah. It was different. And the other coach I had known like my whole life and he was one of the first coaches that I had ever worked with. So I decided to go with the older team and my problems started coming back. So, <laughs> Oh, a lot of anxiety because didn't have to leave the house forever. And it was a new and different situation. New environment. environment. Yeah, Yeah, I was also a freshman in high school. So what I've realized is every time I go to a new school, I get nervous. New environment. And I just, I don't like it because I'm not comfortable. Sure. And I don't, I didn't like not knowing what was next or not knowing like anyone there or being comfortable with anyone. So basically same thing as what happened my 13th year. Just a bunch of panic and anxiety, and it would take over everything. And I just. And nobody making you go. Yeah. But at this point, I was old enough to be like, no, I'm setting that boundary. I'm not going, blah, blah, blah. And I was, I'm stubborn. That's not why. Okay. Well, that's why I, what, what's why? (laughs) That's her side of the story. I I was taken out of the equation to make you go. Yeah. Dad wasn't allowed to be like, you need to go. Yeah. Because you were in a co-parenting situation now. Oh, uh, no, we were still married. Not at that oh. point. <laughs> we were still married at that time, but she was never home. Oh, okay. So she didn't ever really see how bad it was mm. on a regular basis. So when she got a taste of how bad it can be, she thought she shouldn't go. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to go. So, And it didn't really matter what I said. Yeah. Mm. So didn't go to a lot of things. And I was also very stubborn. So I'd be like, well, I'll go to this, blah, blah, blah. I got to the point where my coach was like, dude, you need to show up. I was like... shit i'm in trouble (laughs) so started showing up more but it was still like very like anxiety driven and then i injured myself it was like something with my knee i wasn't even playing volleyball like it got sprained and strained but it was still swollen like a month later i think i remember you wearing an e-brace yeah and nothing was fixing itself so and this was, um, just as a side note, this was Josh's first soiree into his uh, video skills. Josh That's about right. used to uh, camcord games, right? Oh, yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a camera I'd set up. I'd use a tablet. <laughs> That's what you were doing. You'd yeah. have a tripod in the corner. <laughs> yeah, I'd have, a, I'd have a tripod on a tablet and record it on that because it was easier to transfer the files and whatnot. So that was my first running of a camera, <laughs> mm-hmm. actually. Actually, I did your sister's yeah. prior, so I was... I had done it a little bit before I was starting to record hers, but you're I think the, it about 14 or 15. You're the team ago. cameraman. Yeah. It was. I, I, oh, yeah. I made YouTube a YouTube channel. channel. There's a I YouTube made, channel. I made a YouTube, there is a YouTube channel under my <laughs> name that has just a bunch of volleyball videos on it. So nice. if you find and that, that's from. And it's they me. are They are not edited at all. They are a start and a stop. Yep. Yeah. And, and then it. upload. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I stumbled my way through that. Little on did my you own. know. Before, oh, yeah. before I had old Timmy here to go, hey. I was like, how do you make this look better? <laughs> <laughs> well, at first it was like a camcorder. It wasn't even a I tablet. Did. I did a ta- I did a camcorder yeah. at first, and then I realized how much easier it was to take just do a tablet and upload mm-hmm. the file from the tablet. And then uh, I was always the one who was more willing to watch film. Yeah, your sister Taylor would. hated it, but I loved watching it and just being like, "Wow, I really fucked up there." Mm-hmm. Okay, but Isn't I also liked watching the games that I was how good at. fast the game feels. Oh, yeah. And then you watch it, and you're like, oh, my God, we're moving like slugs. No, yeah. literally. You know? I was yeah, like, it's crazy. I thought this was way faster. God, I'm slow. Yeah. 
It just the yeah. game feels fast when you're playing. You want me sitting over there going, "Move your feet," because I can watch that. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh no, and I would, and then I'd be like, "God, I look like lazy." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's how you point. learn and get better. You that's know, you, you you could assess what you were doing, and then you got some feedback, and yeah. And then I'd be like, "Oh, I remember this game. I specifically remember one year in Linwood. There was this ref." And you'd have to, like, climb on the stands. But normally stands are really tall. And these ones were really short. And it was just a box that they had to climb on. She was very short. Oh, God, I remember and that. And she fell getting up. <laughs> and so we just watched the video and kept watching her fall <laughs> of getting so on the ref stand. And it's so bad. It was really funny. She was really <laughs> tiny. And it was... We go she get, like then, slow mo no, 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 over no, 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 it. No, no, no. She got she got all the way up and then she went like this, like she <laughs> and then <laughs> like she'd crawl on it for the rest of the time because she fell. <laughs> she'd crawl on it like a baby. <laughs> that was oh. so good. Oh my goodness, that was I totally forgot about that. that Best part of film, honestly, was watching the things that you wasn't actually volleyball bloopers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was yeah. a lot of dancing. Yeah. Fun stuff. Oh, yeah. And then after that season, that summer just went downhill. Probably, oh, oh, my rock bottom. Yeah. Definitely my rock bottom. Had a lot of struggles with, um, what's that fear of leaving the house? Uh, Agoraphobia. Yeah, I had a lot of struggles with agoraphobia. I couldn't get her to leave the house ever. And Mm. I literally couldn't even walk down the street a block without crying. Like, yeah. bad. And uh, I struggled with that as well as anxiety and depression. And it just got really dark. I'd cry myself to sleep every night. I wasn't eating. Like, I think I lost 20 pounds in like three months. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was it was bad. And then uh, I can't breathe out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you got a dog allergy. No, I no, don't. No, he can't be allergic to Louie. <laughs> He's hypoallergenic. He's my best friend. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Doodles. They don't yeah. shed. And yeah, people aren't allergic to them. That's oh. why you have to shave them. And they get lots of smooches. Oh. Lots of smooches. So what started to help or what was your turning point? Um, Hitting rock bottom and realizing I don't want to live like this forever. Mm-hmm. So and you made a decision yourself? Yeah, I got to a point where I was like, well, I don't want to live. Um, And then... That was really rough on everyone, not just me. Yeah. And uh, it just it was a it was a big struggle for everyone around me too, because I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to do anything. I had no motivation for the things that I had cared about prior. Yeah. And it's kind of just you get to that point and you're like, what the hell? And people around me were even like, Well, you seem like such a happy kid. Like, what happened? And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Mm. And it got to a point I started seeing a new therapist because I had stopped seeing my other therapist for a while and uh, caught on drugs. <laughs> oh, God, love prescription drugs. <laughs> Do it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Prozac is my best friend. Mm. No, but that definitely did help a lot, especially when my endorphins were so low. I, my body wasn't producing them. So from there, I kind of just slowly built it back up. And it helped a lot once I got my license because I could drive myself places and I didn't have to worry about being like, oh, well, I'm stuck here. I'm trapped. And that was one of my bigger fears. And I had to go on like my drives for driver's ed because I hadn't done any of those yet because it was all online. And they were like, if you don't do that, you're going to have to retake it. And to retake the class, it's like 800 bucks. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. So I was like, oh, crap. And if I was going to have to retake it, I was going to have to probably pay for it myself. Yeah. So. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to so pay like, for yourself. Yeah, we Figure should probably out. go on these drives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so started driving every night and going on the drives that I needed to. And I passed my written on the first time. And I passed my... Uh, drive test on the first time and then I got my license on my birthday and I very proud of myself but I was doing online school at that point so I was still not like going to school or doing anything and then um, by that spring 
I'd what? So on the stage of COVID, this is on the back side of it now. Yeah, yeah. this is like twenty twenty one ish. That mm, April, I'd say I'd started volunteering at the middle school and just like getting mm. used to getting back to life, and then uh, they got a divorce, and I said, "Ooh, okay." Oh, backtrack more. September of that year, my grandpa died. Right. Which was very surprising. I remember I had hung out with my friends for the first time in a long time. And then my dad came home and was like, yeah, grandpa died today. And I was like thinking that it was like Nana's dad. And he was like, no, my father. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. So went downstairs, cried more. Um, (laughs) And I. hard time. Yeah. It was just a lot all at once. I bet. Um, and it was very surprising. That was probably and still currently the the, the closest person to me that I've lost. Because that was September. Yeah. Before you guys were close. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was very involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They spent a lot of time with us. So he, uh, she got, she got to know him really well. I mean, uh, other than Nana, maybe because I think you probably saw. You probably saw my dad more than uh, your mom's folks. Mm-hmm. So, because we'd come over here a lot. Yeah. Um. So even to this day, that's probably the closest person who I've ever lost. Yeah. Uh, that was really rough, and it's it's still rough sometimes, but yeah. it doesn't ever go away. Yeah. You just kind of learn how to live with it. Yeah. You kind of it starts to become something that you just get used to. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, oh, okay, this is going to take over my day. It's like, okay, maybe this will take over 10 minutes. It's rough. Yeah. Especially when I personally wasn't expecting it. Well, nobody was, honey. Yeah. And I can't imagine how it was for Nana and you, considering that you guys found him. But Yeah. No, I, I was... Um... I think that's probably the most challenging thing I've ever done. Um, probably. I don't know. Um, some of the stuff with, with you when you were really struggling was very, very hard to get through and still remain, you know, strong and supportive and whatnot because if I'm, you know, if I can't be strong, then you're really not going to be able to be strong. Yeah. Right? And, um oh God, sorry. Uh, trying to... um I'm tearing Probably up try. as well. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> this feels like one of my therapy sessions. Louis here to help you out. Yeah, no. Um, He's an emotional support dog. Uh, having to uh, tell you and your sister that we were getting a divorce was probably right up there with challenging. I seemed to have a, a really hard time with it. I yeah. couldn't get through it without getting emotional. Yeah. Um, I was trying not to really hard, but it didn't. In fact, I think I was the most emotional person in the room. At that point. I mean, Taylor had cried for a little bit, and then the first thing she said is, don't date anyone that I've ever hooked up with's parents, please. <laughs> and I said, oh, God. That's, and, well, that's where Taylor would go. It revolves around her. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just Taylor would be the older daughter, by the way, if anybody doesn't know. Love her. Love you, Taylor. <laughs> no, that was, that was hard. Um, that was for sure hard. I, I, I guess... Losing dad was was probably harder. Yeah. Um, and more of a shock. Um, but, you know, when, when that happened for myself, um, I knew that meant it was my time to, to lead our family, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be weak, and I couldn't struggle, and I couldn't um, not show strength so everyone else could grieve. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I tried as hard as I could to make sure that everyone else could do that. Yeah, um, and hopefully that is how it felt. I don't, I don't think we ever really talked about it, honestly. Um, no, but um, we hadn't spoken at a funeral or anything before, and that was interesting and new and hard as well. Fanciest I've ever seen my dad dress. I was 
I was G'd up from the feet up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a full suit. And... Normally, he just wears this every day. Yeah. Maybe well, a flannel when... if we're Actually, feeling And he doesn't pay jazz. for T-shirts, by the way. He just, gets, I, I not, he just wears get the ones he gets for free. I get T-shirts for free. I don't and buy them. The ones buy that I pay, the ones well, that I, I get him. Back, the one I was wearing yesterday, I bought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like very that few, one. Though, very few. I get him band T-shirts, and he wears them. And she then does. he shoots elk in them, so they're his lucky T-shirts. If I am wearing a a music band t-shirt the odds are really high that she bought it for me for a birthday or a father's day or something like that that's very likely but yeah in general i don't why well, I, I bought i bought a couple ones myself but in general i don't buy them they're just ones they send that i don't pay for so i just wear them as a shirt mm-hmm. but he's just like yeah but yeah let's see uh that was actually i couldn't really put my finger on when i went to a mohawk and kept it but that was actually mm-hmm. then because you'd do it every hunting season. I would do it during hunting season, but no, I went through the whole next year. And then when I did it in hunting season the following year, after your mom and I got divorced, I just kept it and yeah. left it. But I had done it every hunting season for several years prior. Yeah. Nobody ever saw it because I'd always have a hat on and it would just be like that when I was hunting. Mm-hmm. Seemed like a good excuse, but... And it's funny because my first like high school volleyball game that I was actually playing, <laughs> he walks in like... Game's already started, so <laughs> normally he's there on time, but he walks in, and the person next to me goes, whose dad is that? I'm like, that would be mine. <laughs> Just because of the mohawk. Yeah, I'm like, the, that's yeah, what, mine. What, what is it like to have a father with a mohawk in public? <laughs> I don't know. Volleyball and like people noticing him is crazy. <laughs> it's hard to go out and him not know someone or someone come up to him. We yeah. were at a tournament in Riverside, and someone was like, I love your videos. <laughs> I'm like, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, they just came up to me. I was like, why was that dad talking to you? <laughs> so it's fun. But after that, it was a little rough getting used to it, I'd say. Yeah. Just because it, it was all over the place. Well, and we're, we were all trying to navigate through it. We're talking about divorce. Yeah. Yeah, the um, the thing that probably scared me the most, honestly, is we had just gotten through you not ever leaving the house, mm-hmm. and now I've got to leave the house. So when am I going to see you? Yeah. And the first, well, it was at least a month or two. Like I would see you for an hour a week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Louis. <laughs> Louis. Yeah. See, that's Louis going. You should have seen your dad more. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Kiss my butt. <laughs> Louis, lay down. Come on, lay down, Louis. He will. He'll, he'll get his attention. He'll he'll lay down. Louis, lay down. <laughs> He's locked eyes with dad. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> lay down. <laughs> I don't know, Josh, if you remember me telling you this prior to your divorce, but that might have been harder. I thought I said something like kids are very intuitive and um I bet your kids will understand. Yeah. No, you did. You were oh, yeah. you were pretty supportive through it and had um, um because kids had are good, had good insight because ki- kids are intuitive and i remember going through my parents divorce and uh i was in sixth grade or seventh grade but i knew it was coming like they didn't tell me but i knew it was coming and i yeah. knew they would be happier without each other mm-hmm. uh so when th- when they told me i wasn't shocked i don't know how did you feel um i kind of disassociated a little bit but i had always been one to be like i know my parents are not staying together forever mm-hmm. that was something that i knew which is kind of, it's sad, but it's... When did you think you realized it's that? more realistic. I, I was pretty young, probably like second or third grade, maybe fifth, let's say. Um, <laughs> That's a jump of a difference. <laughs> I don't know. Around that age, <laughs> I was just like, grade, just probably kind of blob, once I yeah. turn 18, yeah. my parents are going to get a divorce. I feel like the only reason they were staying together was because of me. Hmm. I think your dad might have mentioned trying to stay together for you just... I yeah. did. No, I, I, oh, you guys are eighteen. <laughs> I knew it. Well, I knew yeah. a, I knew a long time before that. Yeah. I well, it wasn't that. It was just, I just wasn't going to leave my kids. Yeah. Right. I wasn't going to risk leaving my kids, no matter how unhappy I probably was. Mm-hmm. So I just put my head down and dealt with it mm-hmm. best I could. And then it came when I was just freshly turned sixteen, and. I was kind of just like, oh, didn't know this was going to happen right now, but I knew it was going to happen at some point. So I knew that it was better for everyone else. And personally, I like my relationship with my parents now more because I actually feel like I spend time with them more and I value the time that I'm with them. 
and they're both happier. It's yeah, happiness just, trickles down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as stressful anymore when it comes to things. And like, I don't feel like I ever feel like I have drama with family. I mean, there's always drama, but you know, I just don't <laughs> feel like I have as much as there was in a household at certain points. And like, there'd be really good points and then like really low points. And it's not like it was the worst thing ever, but it wasn't the best. It's like some kids grow up knowing that their parents are true loves and are going to love each other for life. And I just never felt that. Mm. I, it sounds sad, but it's it's realistic. It's probably sadder if it's your actual life. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dad. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Every, everybody makes their choices. You spent 17 years there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 18. Yeah. It, it, everyone, um, everyone makes their choices in, in their lives and decides what they're going to do and how they're going to live them. And that's what you get to live with. You know, you, I, I get to accept that for the rest of my life because those were my choices. Which I'm still happy. You guys, obviously I'm happy I'm here, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still glad that that happened. But I think I am too. now I, it's for the better. I, I am too. I just, I wouldn't, when, when I decided that I was going to have children, I decided my life wasn't about me. And if I was going to get a divorce, that would have been a me decision. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make myself do it. Yeah. Your, you know, your mom had to do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful. I really am. Cause I didn't, I also didn't think at that point that you were going to be able to handle it very well. Yeah. So I, w I wasn't going to do it. Um, and you ended up handling it a lot better than I thought other than it probably took what I'm trying to remember how long it was before you actually started like spending the night. Um, that I remember I was like, I just need to get through volleyball season. Cause I had started school volleyball up again. And I was like, just let me get through that because I have a lot going so on. The divorce was in May. No, it was like March. No, it was, no, it was April. April. It was April. It was April. It was April. And then volley so volleyball season started in September and went through October, right? Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. was April, May, June, July, August, September, October. It was seven months. Yeah. And then I stayed, I was a little nervous for the first night, but I it went fine. Well, you hadn't stayed anywhere. Yeah, I hadn't stayed anywhere, but this is also like where I grew up. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and because we wanted to make sure that I could stay the night for Christmas. <laughs> so we're like, just focus on that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, probably like seven months, but I'd come over here like twice a week for dinner. Yeah. Um, it's got to be I, easier having your grandma around too, isn't it? Because she's, yeah. she's so cool. So cool. She's always making cookies. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so amazing and I love it. Yeah. Love you, Nana. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the time going back you to like, like like a week or was it two weeks that this will be out from now? She's gonna be watching this and start crying because you said that. Oh probably. Yeah, it's Nana. <laughs> um <laughs> but uh at the time, like what well, it was April. Uh mm -hmm. I was still volunteering at the middle school and one of my sister's friends from high school was student teaching there and she had gone through the same thing at the same age. So it was very nice to have a person who had been through the same kind of stuff around the same time and that definitely helped a lot, but I just felt like it was for the better. Definitely had some car rides where I was sobbing my eyes out and that's not safe at all don't do that don't drive while you're crying but it helped so i mean getting through it helped a lot that summer that had been a year since my attempt yeah july 13th mm -hmm. i think so that year was the year that i was like i want a tattoo <laughs> this is how this whole story started great yeah <laughs> you know it's funny before we started this i was like how are we going to talk for an hour we've talked about like one thing for an hour <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm really good at this yeah uh, oh, <laughs> so good at this. 
Yeah, oh, leave, leave a comment if Lena should have her own podcast. Yeah, that's what I'm. Oh, she totally thinks she should. Thinking. Well, yeah, she's like, I got all the equipment. I was like, No, I have all the equipment. <laughs> you don't have all the. Well, that's equipment. one of the benefits. You can make of me being, start paying uh, rent for studio space. Yeah. Um, At least she's not taking your tools in the garage and moving them around and losing them. Yeah, you know? right. That's yeah. what that's what boys do to their dads. That's very true. All the only stuff I did. I mean, I know how to change a tire and like do all my car stuff. Kind of. You do. You can change a tire. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. She can. I changed my tires from awesome. studs to regular, which oh, we damn. don't have to do this year. But um, all I remember from helping my dad was, "You're not holding the flashlight in the right spot. Every, I can't you, see." Have you seen any of those memes where they talk about getting their dad back or whatever? <laughs> I can't I see. That's like, not where I the am. light needs to be. <laughs> or like a guy will be doing it. You know, like. I don't know if my dad was here and he was holding the flashlight for me. I'd be just berating him the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a couple of those uh, floating yeah, around I've the internet that good. are very funny. Oh um, yeah, there's a, there's several very. funny I think ones everybody there. gets it if they. <laughs> oh yeah, but he'd yeah. he'd make me go out and help, and because especially with my car, he's like, no, you need to know how to do this mm-hmm. because I mean it's my car. So we probably need to know where the oil goes and where to check the oil mm-hmm. and <sighs> where coolant goes. And- the only reason why the Ford didn't just seize on the freeway is because um, Grandpa was watching over that car um, and me, probably. But he was like, that's my car. You're not fucking breaking it. <laughs> Put <laughs> oil in it, damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. She didn't She didn't check that one for okay. a while. Because uh, uh, it was confusing. Uh, you were checking the transmission fluid. <laughs> <laughs> for oil. First of all, I was like, the why the hell is too this much. red? There's why too the hell much is in this here. Red? I'm like, what are you talking about? What in the world are you looking at? But even your uh, <laughs> my boss, your boss at work my also GM. was checking the transmission fluid. Well, because I showed him, <laughs> you what, showed it him was. what it was. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he was like, yeah, was like, I'm was, not sure. He, he even called me and told me, and I'm like, well, I'll just drive it home and I'll take a look at it. And I go in there and go, and I pulled it out and looked at it. I'm like, there's not even anything on the dipstick. And I put it back in there and I go, I start looking at the car and I go, Go and get Lena's. Like, here, show me what you're checking. <laughs> Look at that. I was like, that's the tranny fluid. <laughs> oh, I've been checking that this whole time. Yeah, no, there's not enough fluid. I was so confused there's definitely by the stick. I thought the tranny weird. fluid was good, huh? Oh, there was plenty in there. It was a little too much, actually. I was so confused why the fluid was red and the stick was different. And I was like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it be. I'm yeah. just a girl. If you ignore it, it'll go away, yeah. I'm just a girl. Mm-hmm. That's never been an acceptable excuse for me, you know that. I know. Yeah. But let it be. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what are we at? Um, started staying the night, and now... You're with me half the time. Yeah, I like, started like playing club again. Be. Started getting back into it. Yeah. And now I do like travel tournaments and everything. Kind of back to normal. And then this past summer, he finally let me do it on my two-year anniversary. Get my tattoo, and it's just a butterfly wing behind my ear because it represents mental health and everything. And figured it was a good memento. And he promised me that he would think about it if I ever got back to once I got back to normal. Yeah, think about a tattoo or yeah, like letting before her have I was one eighteen. Before she was oh, eighteen, okay. She was really adamant about wanting it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ever think about something for more than a couple months, it's usually the decision you want to make. But yeah. that's a pretty big decision, so you thought about it for a while. I had wanted it for a long time. Yeah. Even before I had that like big episode, I had wanted it just because I had struggled with anxiety my entire life. And I wanted a representation of that on my body because it's part of my story. Um, but not in just a hey, let me show this off kind of way. And so it, it's just tucked behind my ear. It's my little wing. And yeah, that's the story cool. behind my tattoo. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so in case we were wondering if she's short-winded or long-winded, she's long-winded. <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? It takes you a really long time to get to the Oh, point. I the ADHD <laughs> in my brain, I'm unmedicated. <laughs> That's my fault, I guess. Sorry. Yeah. Unmedicated. Hey, it is a superpower if you point it in the right direction. It's absolutely. Yeah. I know. I'm really 100%. good at things. You just, yeah. have, you just have to just well, point it in the right direction. Yeah. The amount of stuff that you can do if you choose to mm-hmm. is pretty incredible. Yeah. Just got to point it in the right direction. Yeah. I get distracted often, but I always come back to topic. Yeah. yeah. Just might take a little bit. <laughs> That's yeah. where the story got us. Yeah. Yeah. 
Where do you think the line is in anxiety between just caring a lot and anxiety? Because a lot of people think anxiety very high functioning. Mm-hmm. And a very high functioning person could care a lot. But where do you think that line is? I mean, it's, I don't know. Because anxiety almost takes over your body in mm-hmm. a way that you can't control it. And caring a lot, you can almost control that in a way. So a panic attack would take over my body. But now I can somewhat control it because I've I've worked with it. Because it's, it's almost like a relationship within myself. It's, you have to realize that it's not going to go away forever. It's still going to be there. And it's just there to keep you safe and help trying to help even when it's not being helpful but caring too much it's kind of just like well i could i it's hard to stop caring but it's there's also a fine line where i can be like i'm still in control of myself Mm -hmm. whereas when i'd have an over like a blown up panic attack i physically would just be like i i can't feel my limbs i don't know what's going on everything would just be a spiral and like my brain was just mush yeah super fun love it though (laughs) love anxiety (laughs) well yeah you know everyone has their challenges you know um the things that you struggle with as long as you learn how to deal with them and how to maintain and manage them can be and make other stuff seem easy. Yeah, it'll shape who you right. are and you'll grow from it, right? Yeah, whether it's oh, yeah. whether it's learning how to live with crippling anxiety or burying your father yeah. or, you know, going through your parents getting divorced, uh, seeing your kid an hour a week for a long time, you know, all those things make everything else seem really easy. So if I like how I get through so many things and do so many things and make every, so many things manage and but not it's because those things don't seem hard. Because they're not. Well, but they did, to the th- and to a lot of people, yeah. they are. Yeah, mm-hmm. but right. they don't feel hard in the moment. They don't. They don't feel hard once you've felt things that are really hard. Yeah. Like what have you challenges. felt that's really hard? Burying my dad. Oh, I was. I was making a joke. Oh, that kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Burying my dad, not God, seeing my kid dark. <laughs> more than like an hour a week for like four months. Yeah, that got months. really dark. Did. I did. But it's okay. You're trying to go dirty. That's gross. I'm sorry. I Blech. thought that was the whole point of this Blech. podcast. No, it's not. It's, well, Tim, Tim's the dirty innuendo guy. <laughs> I thought that it's was you. Tim. No, no, that's Tim. That's Tim says something, and then I try to make it sound probably worse than he intended. But so, usually, oh usually Tim's dirty little mind. Yeah. We're at a, kind of gar- an interesting... <laughs> garbage pail kid over there. <laughs> We're at kind of an interesting point in time. Where do you, where do you think... Your dad will be five years from now. Oh, God. Where do you think, and like, where would you hope to be five years from now? Um, Because, yeah, five years from now is a long time, but, I mean, what do you think, Lena? Um, Me, personally, I would like to be, oh, dear Lord, graduated from college because uh, this June I will be graduated from high school and have my AA degree. Mm -hmm. Um. So I would like to be graduated. That's two years early, by the way. Yeah. I would like to be graduated from college and hopefully have a stable job. I want to be a graphic designer uh, for a sports team, preferably hockey. Love my hockey men out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's aiming high, folks. <laughs> um, if you play in the NHL and would like to marry me, go ahead. <laughs> go. That's, that's where the standards are. <laughs> um <laughs> So I'd like to be designing specialty jerseys and just like different things for NHL teams or different some creative graphic, yeah. Professional sports teams. Um so hopefully I'm We're probably gonna need a graphic designer down the road, don't you think? Settled in a sports team. She's been given the opportunity to design me stuff and she doesn't put much effort well, into I it. Well, I have designed a lot of things. For me. Yeah. I gave like, you that logo and I thought it was yeah, it really was like, fucking cool. Yeah, but it was taking like some other image and just putting some initials. Okay, on well, it. we need to figure out how to get the Apple Pencil to work before that. It was working. You see it plug it in. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> ah, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> that has been suppressed. I've been trying to suppress it and it just needs to come out. Yeah, that's good. But um, I see my father in five years. Hopefully, we're at at least 100K. 
Oh, I'd be wasting her nap. I'd really like to see both of those YouTube plaques on that wall. What's the other one? Million. Oh, and yeah, then there's also a ten million sub where it's just diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Really like to see those on the wall because I think that'd be a really cool backdrop thing. Uh, <laughs> but that's also amazing. It's also amazing. Um, I think considering now with how fast he's grown, I think it's it's just gonna get even bigger. And like I feel like archery has become more expanded with the use of social media. So I think there's just there's a lot of fun projects in store. So it's it's going to grow a lot more than I think he's ever thought it would. Considering with where we are now, considering that he refused to do any sort of social media aspect for the longest time. It's not wrong. Like Dan would be like, we need to do this. And he's like, I'm not getting in front of the camera. (laughs) No, I'd, I'd get in front of the camera. I just wouldn't engage. Yeah, and he didn't want to do it himself. He'd be guest appearances, so that's why it took so long for him to get his own YouTube channel. Because he didn't want to... Well, it's his fault, though. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Yeah. He... How... God, you bugged me for like a year and a half or two years before I finally started it. Started mine. Yeah, it was a little while. A little while. Mm -hmm. Because he's stubborn. (laughs) I wonder where I get it from. (laughs) Yeah, we know. (laughs) Yeah. But I think it's going to grow a lot more than you think. Hopefully, I would like to see more of a sponsored thing at tournaments. Like you as a sponsor instead of just like oh. Matthews or Bowtech. Oh, well, it's possible. I think that would be really cool. Gotta, we got we to gotta get to Lancaster level before we probably see that too much. But that's – who knows? Who knows if it's achievable? We'll see. Because I think it would be really cool. Also, it's like – to have to have more people order things or like know who you are. It's really fun because I remember when we were up there, you'd be like, oh, so this is getting shipped to the Mariners stadium. Yeah, you came and uh, you came and helped me process orders a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, there's been yeah. some pretty cool names come through the order queue. Yeah, there's been some pretty dope ones. Yeah. Hi, there's Mr. Been, Joe uh, Rogan. <laughs> uh, Joe, yeah, Joe's, Joe bought something <laughs> once. Um, what was it? Matt? I think it was Madison Baumgartner. Was a, he was Bomb a Gardner. yeah, we're based in Baum Gardner. I'm trying to remember the name, but he was a uh, he was on the Giants. He was uh, won the World Series. Mm. He was one of the pitchers. Every once in a while, you'd see a name. You go, wait a minute. You look at it, and then you look at where it was going. You had to look it up. You're like, ah, holy crap, that's <laughs> cool. Been a few few famous people. Yeah, it's really fun. I want. I think it'd be really cool if he had collabs with people and just have them. Because I think these people actually really want to learn how to do these things. And if you have people come out here and I don't know if you want to teach them how to do it. because No, that's like my premise. I want to teach people how to do this. Yeah. And the more public, the better, because then more people learn. Yeah. Personally, um, Brad Marchant, he I think that's how you say his last name. He is the captain of the Boston Bruins, and he's a huge hunter. He's also one of my favorite NHL players. <laughs> Oh my God! Please come out here. Dream collab. <laughs> I've told you to DM him. I'm not. <laughs> please, oh I feel goodness. like that would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's, it's pretty cool. The doors that the internet can open. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So I that's where I see him in five years is just being more known and expanding to a point where I don't think he has ever thought he could be. That's cool. Mm. Considering from where you bought the shop. Yeah, I was barely surviving. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Let's, let's end now on that note. Serving. Tell them about your website. Bodymarcher.com. Discount Come code. By. Discount code Tim, Tim C. C. Yep. Lena, is that where you get your archery goods? Oh, yeah. I just <laughs> walked down the road. <laughs> I just walked down and take it. Yeah. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I'm well, taking this hoodie. Um, special guest, Lena Jones <laughs> on the pod. Let us know if you think she should have her own podcast. And uh, if you'd like to see her back on our podcast, maybe we'll get her special guest invite back, you think? We'll see. I think that would be fun. I think Taylor's probably going to be pissed if she doesn't oh, get an episode. Sure. Yeah, but I have no she's going to want to come on the pod? Yeah. yeah. Should we talk about how you and well, Taylor Well, she was matched? the topic of one of our very first podcasts. Yep. And this is true. we'll see you guys back for the next yeah, one. Yeah, let's see how awkward <laughs> that could be. <laughs> Woohoo! You said that I would. You want to make Tim look uncomfortable? That'll be a good one. Oh, yeah. And and she'll start confronting him. 